After watching our episode on articulation, you now know how we make sounds. You wonder, how do we write that down? Sure, I can make little drawings of the mouth and throat every time I want to talk about a sound, but that'll take a really long time. Is there a better way? After all, dealing with sounds very specifically is kind of what phonetics is all about. And if you want to write a textbook, there must be a way to get around long descriptions and weird drawings. And that is where one of the most important tools for phoneticians, and indeed for all linguists, comes in. The IPA. No, not that kind of IPA. I'm sorry. I was disappointed too. While sometimes phonetics can make you want to get drunk, this actually stands for the International Phonetic Alphabet. Remember when we talked about how English isn't too great at having letters sound the same all the time? Like the O in lock versus the O in lord versus the O in boat. Those O's all sound different. You may know the famous Scotty, which can be pronounced fish. Think of the GH in laugh, the O in women, and the TI in nation. Most other languages aren't quite as bad as English, but no language is perfect. Letters just are not good enough if we want to talk about sounds. We need other symbols. We could write lock like that, and boat like that. Those little letter-like symbols there, those are part of the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. It's a way to write down sounds. And there is no ambiguity there. An O is always pronounced O, and an O is always pronounced O. Of course, there are lots of speech sounds that us humans make. That's why the IPA is really big. But that's a little bit scary. And do we really actually need this weird sound? No, for English we don't. So that's why we'll be fine with this smaller, but still kind of big, chart. If you want to look into, say, Spanish, be prepared for other literary things. But you also won't need all the English ones, of course. You probably recognize many of those symbols. They look a lot like the Latin alphabet. That's the one we use for English and many other languages. But no matter what language you speak, each of the IPA symbols will always sound the same. That's what it's all about. And now, instead of saying the sound like the O in lock makes, you can just write this. And if you want to explain to someone that you mean the sound that the letter O in boat makes, you can just write this. So the IPA is very useful if you want to talk about sounds. It makes things a lot shorter. The downside is, of course, that you have to learn a whole bunch of new symbols. Whoops. But it won't be too hard, I promise. To recap this video, Phonetics precisely transcribes human speech sounds. For that, it uses the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. In the IPA, every symbol represents exactly one sound, like non-rubbish letters. No language uses all the sounds, so it's useful to just have a chart for the ones that the language you care about uses.